Welcome to an exciting journey in high-performance computing. In today's tutorial, we'll show you how to build your very own HPC cluster using Alma Linux 9.2 and OpenMPI. Get ready to unleash the power of parallel computing and create your supercomputer. Let's dive in. Now, let's take a closer look at the system under consideration. We have two networked computers, Node 1 and Node 2, both running Alma Linux 9.2 with the OpenMPI environment. Node 1 serves as the master node, while Node 2 functions as the slave node. It's worth noting that you can expand your cluster by adding more slave nodes, increasing cores, and memory as needed. The quality of your network switch and I.O. significantly impacts the cluster's capabilities and performance. Next, we'll explore the crucial files and services setup. On Node 1, with IP address 192.168.29.62, we have services like NFS and RPBind enabled, while AUTOFS is turned off. The firewall and SSHD are both active. We'll configure the slash etc slash hosts and slash etc slash exports files on this node. On Node 2, with IP address 192.168.29.63, NFS is turned off, and RPBind and AUTOFS are enabled. The firewall and SSHD are active as well. Here, we'll work on configuring the slash etc slash hosts and setup slash etc slash auto.master and slash etc slash auto.nfs. We'll cover important steps like SSH key authentication, software installations, enabling services, and setting up auto-mount for NFS shares. Stay tuned for a detailed walkthrough. To ensure smooth operation and communication within the cluster, it's advisable to run it in an isolated environment without setting up a firewall. Moving on, we begin by checking the IP addresses. The IP for our first node, node 1, is 192.168.29.62. Let's confirm this by pinging itself four times. Ping 192.168.29.62c4. Great, node 1 is responding and active. Now, let's find the IP for our slave node, node 2, which is 192.168.29.63. Perfect, Node 2 is also responding and active, confirming their presence. Next, we'll update the slash etc slash hosts file for both Node 1 and Node 2 with their respective IP addresses. This ensures smooth communication between the nodes. Now, let's update the slash etc slash hosts file for Node 1 with IP 192.168.29.62. And we'll do the same for Node 2 with IP 192.168.29.63. With this, we've established the foundation for our HPC cluster setup. Stay tuned for more exciting steps in building your supercomputer. Now, let's set up SSH key authentication for both Node 1 and Node 2. We'll start with Node 1. Begin by generating SSH keys with the command SSH keygen TRSA. As you can see, two files have been generated, id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa.pub. The id underscore rsa.pub file contains the public key. Now, let's open another terminal for Node 2 and generate the keys in a similar manner. With SSH keys generated for both nodes, the next step is to transpose the content of id underscore rsa.pub into the .ssh slash authorized underscore keys file for both nodes. This allows secure key-based authentication, enabling you to log in from one node to another using SSH keys only. It's important to double-check the placement of SSH keys in .ssh slash authorized underscore keys before proceeding.
Now, remove the account password using the password command. Repeat the process for node 2, removing the account password. With SSH keys in place, you can now log in from one node to another with just the node name using SSH. For commands like sudo, it won't prompt for a password. However, before removing the account password, make sure to verify SSH keys and their placement in .ssh slash authorized underscore keys. To apply these changes, reboot both systems. This ensures that the effects take place. Your cluster is now set up with secure SSH key authentication, allowing seamless communication between nodes. Now, let's proceed with installing the necessary packages on node 1 using the DNF package manager. Keep in mind that AUTOFS is not required on this machine. Let's install the packages on node 1. In another terminal, we'll use SSH to remotely install these packages into Node 2. Repeat this process for all other slave nodes if you have multiple slave nodes in your setup. With the packages installed, it's time to enable and start the necessary services, such as RepBind and NFS server on Node 1. We'll also check their status to ensure they're running smoothly. Additionally, we've verified the status and can modify optional or additional services like the firewall and SSHD as desired. Let's enable and start the RepBind and NFS server services on Node 1. This step ensures that your cluster is equipped with the required services to function smoothly and securely. You're well on your way to building a powerful HPC cluster. Now, let's move on to configuring the firewall. We'll use the firewall CMD command to manage the firewall settings. First, we need to add the IP address of node 2 to the firewall rules to accept traffic from it. This step should be repeated for all other slave nodes if you have more.
With the firewall settings in place, it's essential to keep the AutoF service disabled at the master node, which is node 1 in our current setup. Now, let's create the slash etc slash exports file or append the following line to the end of it. Let's break down the NFS export entry slash home slash abarman slash NFS slash cloud asterisk RW sync no underscore root underscore squash no underscore subtree underscore check slash home slash abarman slash NFS slash cloud. This part specifies the directory we want to share through NFS, which is slash home slash abarman slash NFS slash cloud. The asterisk asterisk symbol, this means that any client on the network can access this directory. It's a wildcard representing all hosts. RW, this option signifies read-write access for clients, allowing them to both read from and write to the shared directory. They have full read and write permissions. Sync, the sync option ensures that changes made on the client side are immediately reflected on the server side, providing data consistency. However, it may result in slightly slower performance due to synchronous write operations. No underscore root underscore squash, this setting allows the root user on the client system to have full access to the shared directory. By default, NFS maps the root user to an anonymous user with limited privileges, a security measure, no underscore root underscore squash disables this behavior. No underscore subtree underscore check, this option disables subtree checking, a feature that verifies if a file or directory is part of the shared subtree. Disabling it can enhance performance but may reduce security. In summary, this NFS export entry grants full read and write access to the slash home slash abarman slash NFS slash cloud directory for any client on the network. It ensures immediate synchronization of changes, allows the root user full access, and skips subtree checking for better performance. Please be mindful of the potential security and performance implications when using these settings in your NFS configuration. This line specifies that we'll create NFS and NFS slash cloud directories in the home directory of the user. Any data under the slash home slash up slash NFS slash cloud directory of node 1 is now ready to be shared and accessed through NFS, which stands for Network File System. After creating the slash etc slash exports file, check the exports to ensure everything is configured correctly. These steps are vital in setting up your HPC cluster and enabling seamless data sharing. You're on the right track to building a powerful computing environment. Now, let's move on to configuring Node 2. Open a terminal for Node 2 and establish an SSH connection to it. We'll configure the services and files of Node 2, aligning them with the settings outlined in our Files and Services slide. In this configuration, the NFS server is deactivated, but AutoFS is activated. Back on node 1, we can use the history command to view all the previous commands issued in the terminal. We'll use grep to filter out the command lines related to firewall CMD. Now, let's copy the filtered command line and paste it into node 2's terminal. We'll need to modify it for node 1's specific configuration and then execute it. Now, let's proceed to configure autofs and set up the NFS mounts. We'll start by editing the slash etc slash auto.master file and adding the line slash home slash abarman slash nfs slash etc slash auto.nfs at the end of the file.
Next, we'll create the slash etc slash auto.nfs file using a text editor like 6 and add the line cloud node 1 slash home slash up slash nfs slash cloud to this file. With these configurations in place, we've created NFS and NFS slash cloud directories similar to Node 1 on Node 2. Now, let's restart the autofs and or bind services on Node 2. You can do this using appropriate commands. Now, let's restart the autofs and or bind services on Node 2. You can do this using appropriate commands. To ensure that the NFS mounts are functioning correctly, you can use commands like show mount or mount to check their status. Finally, to test the NFS mount, let's create a file, for example, test.c, on node 1. You'll notice that this file is also accessible from node 2, thanks to the NFS configuration we've set up. These steps ensure that your NFS shares are properly configured and that data can be seamlessly accessed across your HPC cluster. You're making excellent progress. Let's take a closer look at the test.c code provided. This code is a simple example of a parallel program written in C and utilizes the message passing interface MPI, library for distributed computing. Here's a breakdown of the code. Hashtag includes dio.h and hashtag include mpi.h. These are header files that include standard input and output functions and MPI functions, respectively. MPI is a widely used library for message passing parallel computing. Int main, int argc, char asterisk argv, this is the main function of the program, and it takes command line arguments. Int rank, size, these variables, rank and size, will be used to identify the process's rank and the total number of processes. MPI underscore init, and argc, and argv, this function initializes the MPI environment. It's the starting point for any MPI program. MPI underscore com underscore rank, MPI underscore com underscore world, and rank. This line retrieves the current process's rank and stores it in the rank variable. MPI underscore com underscore size, MPI underscore com underscore world, and size. This line retrieves the total number of processes and stores it in the size variable. Printf, hello world from process percent d of percent d backslash n, rank, size. This line prints a message to the standard output, indicating the process's rank and the total number of processes. It's a simple way to demonstrate that each process is executing and has a unique ID. MPI underscore finalize, this function finalizes the MPI environment, indicating that the program has completed its MPI operations. Return zero, finally, the program returns a value of zero to indicate a successful execution. It's worth noting that MPI programs require a special environment for compilation and execution. If needed, you can add the following line at the end of the .bashirk file for the user abarman on each node. This line appends the path to the MPI binaries and sets the ld underscore library underscore path to the MPI library.
Using an indentation tool, we adjust the spaces and correct the coding style to enhance the readability of the code. With the code formatted, we proceed to compile it using PIC. But, oh no, it seems we've encountered some errors in the code. Upon closer inspection, we identify that these are minor typographical errors. The compilation process is now complete, and a.out has been successfully created. Now, let's run a.out in the ordinary style, which means running it as a single-threaded process. Next, we'll run it using Pyron to execute it in parallel. The n2 parameter in the Pyron command specifies the number of parallel or concurrent processes. You can replace 2 with any other integer up to the maximum number of CPUs available on your system, but not beyond that. In the realm of OpenMPI, Open Message Passing Interface, a machine file, often referred to as a host file, serves as a vital configuration component. It's used to specify the machines or nodes that will form a part of a parallel computing cluster. This file plays a pivotal role when launching parallel processes across multiple nodes or machines within your computing environment. Now, we need to work with both terminals, and Tmux is a great application for this purpose. Write window for node 2. Oh no! I forgot to set up the environment for node 2. Rearrange Tmux vertically, and in the upper window, run top on node 2 to monitor processes. Wow! On node 2, three instances of a dotout are running concurrently or in parallel. These steps demonstrate the process of editing, compiling, and running an MPI program, both in single-threaded and parallel modes, showcasing the power of parallel computing. Thank you, dear viewers, for joining us on this enlightening journey into setting up an HPC cluster with OpenMPI. Your engagement and support mean the world to us. We hope this video has been instrumental in expanding your knowledge and boosting your confidence when it comes to configuring and running parallel processes across multiple nodes. Your presence and enthusiasm are truly valued. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech tips and tutorials. See you in the next video. Don't forget to check out our other videos, and follow us on social media for the latest updates. Goodbye.